you. Hello, everybody. Lovely to be here today. So we started on this um, journey from, from various interesting spaces that you do in a university when we developed a lead guide, we developed data management training, been doing fairly traditional stuff. And we had a community that was seeking to really understand how they should grasp um, e-resource data management, e-research data management issues, and a range of different challenges within a large group of eight university. So when we started on the journey that has produced the modules uh, that you will be able to see when you click on it at the end of the show, um, our researchers built a little bit like these penguins on this road that they were being equipped in various places with little bits of information and then they would try to jump in and hit their head on a sea of um, barriers when they knew there were resources and support within the university that was not transparent to them. So some people were knew a little bit about the supercomputer and felt frustrated. Some people knew a little bit about the Australian Data Archive. And we were particularly talking to early career academics and um, higher degree research students. And they felt they were very much at sea. So in the university, we created a number of um, discussion areas. We'd had uh, three e-research committees set up um, and complete their terms trying to figure out what the university should do on a large scale. And that turned out to be too big a problem to solve in any way. But a number of the um, clear gaps to us were things that we started to fill. So our first little segue after the lead guide, which had been around for a while, was to create a data management single website for the university where we pointed to the code of practice, all the university policies and procedures, all the information that was on faculty websites, and we tried to bring it together in one cohesive way. That took us 12 months of discussion and investigation, and there were probably still things that we didn't find at the end. And it was a collaborative effort between the research services staff, the library staff, uh, the repository staff, um, the IT staff, uh, and the research training staff. We have a separate area in that supports HDR training. So everything that we learned from that was what we took along our journey. So when we really were talking to the audience about what we need and there were various workshops, it became clear that we needed to use some different pedagogies and different tools to be able to really create a very successful solution, particularly focusing on the researchers who were going to be the researchers of the future. So we looked at MOOCs. And in looking at MOOCs, we thought, look, we're going to be the ninjas. We may not be here from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m., but we're going to try this new technology to see if we can use the sorts of learning that's happening about um, education and knowledge transfer in a way that will help us learn how to communicate about scholarly communications. So we mapped out six modules, and one of them was the research data module. We, we Put out this lovely structure which started with the first one so people would understand the concepts and we very quickly decided what we needed to do was get how to publish and how to manage your data out very quickly because the need was so strong. So MOOCs were important to us because we were thinking in many ways as previous uh, speakers have about what how can we support the researcher who at 2 a.m., our hypothetical research, 2 a.m. in Caldwell, um, on a bit of not very good bandwidth necessarily, needs to just do that first bit of data management or the last bit of data management in order to finish their project, their thesis, and they don't necessarily want to go through a whole course end to end, and they're certainly not going to come to our one-hour courses. How can, how can we reach out to people who are living in this world of Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and, uh, and MOOCs is the way to do it? So we really tried to bring those concepts together. We talked to a lot of people who had done MOOCs, who said to us, um, authenticity is the most important thing, not a huge lot of um, very high quality processed material. So we worked with a lot of people who we thought would be able to contribute so that we would be able to package everything up in short, sharp um, collections of information under themes with quizzes. Uh, the two things I wanted to particularly emphasise before I move on to Imogen is that we used what was called at that stage a SPOC. So it's not a MOOC, which is the massive online open courses. It's a sort of special private online course. Everything is fully openly available. It's, and it's not like the MOOCs where you have to join. These you can join at any time. 
and the intention was to get lots of three to five minute slots where people can talk about an important issue and we had fantastic buy-in from around the world um, and also to be a bit entertaining and use new technology. So you will see when you see it that it doesn't have all of the Amy branding that you see on our slides because we went as we say, off-piste, <laughs> uh, into an exciting space um, and used a number of different technologies we hadn't, hadn't used before. So that was very useful for us. And the other characteristic for us was we actually asked all the way through, particularly early career academics, what they wanted. And I think they would see us walking around the campus in duck sometimes so that we wouldn't ask. Sometimes we offered them, you know, um, Coca-Cola and pizza. They're very successful. I highly recommend that as a strategy. But we really wanted to be quite iterative in building our solution that met their needs and being able to be flexible. So I'll hand over to you. Great. Right. Thanks, Roxanne. Okay, so our module talk data to me, uh, you can see that we have a great lineup of presenters, and it was wonderful working with all these people uh, from NCI, uh, from the ARC, from um, let's have a little look there, and uh, and we also scored a presentation from Dr. Tony Hay, uh, the chief data scientist from the Science and Technology Facilities Council in the UK. So this particular module, as Roxanne said, is one that sits amongst a series of modules. Uh, we've looked at data management plans, data citation, funders' data requirements, uh, and again, with that idea, as Roxanne said, of assisting researchers navigate uh, the scholarly communications and publishing environment, specific in this case to research data management, but not just researchers now, this is research of the future, getting people into this space, thinking about what's required really early on, even as early as, say, uh, late high school students. Um, our wonderful presenters listed there, you can see them as I said, and we uh, have also got more in the pipeline. So those other modules are being developed. We are really fortunate to have had, again, amazing presenters from Yale, Oxford, um, and the input and different perspectives from a number of uh, experts in this area. So watch this space. And uh, as you can see, it's definitely been a team effort. It's been wonderful collaborating both within the library and between other areas of the ANU, uh, as well as students who have definitely played a role in the development of this module and the series. Yeah. Okay, thanks. thanks.